glory 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 to the lamb glory 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 to the lamb for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you are the lamb upon the throne and unto thee we lift a voice in praise you are the lamb upon the throne Praise the name of the living God, my brother and my sister. Wherever you are watching from, you are welcome again at our program. Our program, my program is called Rebuilding the Broken Foundations. Rebuilding the Broken Foundations as according to Psalms chapter 11, Psalms chapter, uh, uh, Psalms chapter 11, verse 3. David was asking himself that if the foundations be destroyed, what they can what can the righteous do? And the question, the answer is we are not righteous by our own works, but by the finished works of the Lord Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. So may the good Lord Jesus Christ bless you, my brother and my sister. Wherever you are watching from, I welcome you. I welcome you on this program. On this program, God is still speaking. God is still speaking. And God wants to save mankind. God wants to save mankind. God wants to give us the gift of eternal life. If we can only hearken to his voice. If you hear God's word today, don't hearken. Don't harden your heart, my brother. God want to save you. It doesn't matter. You've been a sinner. It doesn't matter. You've been a fornicator. You've been a liar. You've been a thug. You've been a person who does the greatest grievances, greatest sins on earth. God wants to save your life. God wants to save you. Just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then the full promises of God will be fulfilled in your life. My name is Lawrence Mugumbia and I'm here to share with you the word of the Lord God Almighty which has put upon my heart. I've obtained the knowledge from the Holy Scriptures and from the visions that the angels and the Holy Spirit have revealed to me and by the revelation God has given me through his word by the Holy Spirit. And I'm here to share with you the things that are truthful, the things that give you eternal life. The Bible says uh, Jesus asked the apostles and the disciples and all Christians and every man and woman that when you read the Bible, seek the scriptures that in them you think there is eternal life. And they are those that testify about the Lord Jesus Christ. So I am here, my brother, to share with you the word of life, the word of life, the word of truth, and the word of life. God bless you wherever you're watching from. Just invite a friend, invite a friend, and we share the word of the Lord God Almighty. And uh, two days back, I began uh, sharing about prophetic fulfillment, prophetic fulfillment. It's expedient, precious child of God for you to know that we are living in the last days. We are living in the last days and the church is anticipating the rapture. We are anticipating the rapture. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming to take us back home home and i tell you every day i'm preparing i'm washing my clothes i've been 
spend today ironing and tomorrow I'll still iron them all. I, I am preparing my house. I've got to meet my Lord Jesus Christ. He saved me. He died for me. I was a sinner. I was immoral. I was corrupt in all my mind. But behold, the Lord Jesus Christ had mercy upon me and forgive me. And he also wants to save your life. If today you accept your, uh, him as Lord and Savior, you repent of your sin, no matter they have been much, he will save you and will give you the gift of eternal life. And you will be clothed with a new garment. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And the seal of the Holy Spirit is the assurance for eternal life. Is the assurance for you to know that you are set rap, uh, ready for rapture. When you have the Spirit of God, be confident because rapture shall not leave you here. There are mansions prepared for you in the Father's paradise. In the Father's house, there are many mansions. I have one there. You have one there. If you have yet been born again and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have a mansion in the Lord's house, in the Lord's paradise, in heaven. We are going. We are going. The Bible says, when you shall see these things come to pass, which we are about to share, then we should not be troubled just as the world are troubled. We should rejoice. The Bible says, lift now up your heads because our redemption draws nigh. I tell you, if you confess Jesus Christ, I'm here to encourage you that your redemption is so near. You are about to, 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 to escape the challenges of this world. You are about to, to be saved. You are about to... to, to, to to be taken in your eternal rest. This is not the time of torment now. This is not a time to, 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 to cry, to, 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 to think that you are forsaken. No, sir. It is a time of God's a, a redemption. God is redeeming his people from the four corners of the earth. God is redeeming his people from the four quarters of the earth. God is redeeming his people from the four quarters of the earth. Now is the time to see his goodness. Now is the time to see his marvelous works in our lives. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's stand together in the book of Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 5. Verse 5, that will be our major uh, uh, scripture that we are going to share about today in the next 30 minutes. And may the good Lord Jesus bless you so much. I uh, will read here. Can you just stand there with me? I read from the KJV version. Here the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Many shall come in my name and they shall say, I am Christ and they shall deceive many. Remember, in verse 2 of the same chapter, the Lord, uh, the disciples asked Jesus questions of this kind and which we are sharing now. In, uh, it is in uh, verse 3. It says, And he sat on top of the mountain of olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, Lord, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So, uh, yesterday with my brother Thaddeus, we shared about uh, uh, when these things shall be the thing, uh, the, the thing, the prophetic fulfillment of the destruction of the temple, how it would be. And we saw that here we don't have any continuing city, but we seek one which is to come. And I remind you that we are pilgrims here on earth. Don't be conformed to your state, your country, to your citizenship, to your permanent citizenship, to your peer. Don't be conformed to that country. Don't be conformed to your office of work. Don't be conformed to your business. You might be the, the CEO. You might be great or president whatsoever. Don't be conformed unto this world. We are going, we are going in our places 
prepared by the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. We are pilgrims here. So here, the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14, that here we don't have any continuing city, but we seek a city whose maker and builder is God. The city that has his foundations and whose maker and builder is God, that's where we've put our full focus. And when we see these things happening, pestilence says, uh, catastrophes, earthquakes, corruption in governments, when you see murders, wars, and the rumors of wars, false prophets arising, and many more others that we are going to read down in Matthew chapter 25, uh, in Matthew chapter 24, and in Luke chapter 21. When we see these things happening, the Lord said, lift up your heads, lift up your heads, because our redemption draws near. Our redemption is just close at the door. We are just a few steps ahead of our redemption. So it's now time for patience and endurance to every Christian worldward. For every man and woman who wants the redemption, it's not time for religion. It's not time for denomination. It's not time for division. It's not time for luxury. It's not time to close ourselves in the rooms and, uh, and enjoy all the films and the movies and enjoy comedy. No, sir. It's a time of turning back to God. I bless God for the Congress of the, of the United States. I have just watched it recently. My brother Mildson just sent me a, an, a video whereby the congressmen, they were in the state house praying. I saw a, 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 a senate praying and repenting and flooding tears, calling for God's intervention. You know how you answered crucified Jesus. U.S. government had crucified Jesus under uh, Obama administration. It had kicked away the Bible from schools. It had kicked away the Ten Commandments. It allowed abortion. It allowed divorce. It allowed homosexuality. It supported very many wicked behaviors, which the Lord Jesus Christ is against. But I thank God for President Trump because he has the integrity, he has the integrity, and he has been willing to always be corrected. He has always stood against homosexuality. He stood and said, this nation is a nation established upon God's principles, established by great men like Abraham Lincoln, who knew God, who loved God. Men that stood in the days, men like Peter Graham, who stood, men like Martin Luther, who stood out for that great nation, and they established the nation according to the Holy Bible. The whole constitution of America had been established upon the Holy Bible. But when President Obama came, he devastated, he allowed to be used of the devil and, uh, and uh, really did great error in his reign. But I thank God that America is repenting. America is repenting. And I thank God for the president of... Um, I thank God for the president of... Uh, let me first pause a moment here. Uh, there is a light problem, but it's going to be corrected soon by the grace of God. Yeah, it is back. So I thank God for the president of, uh, of Tanzania. President Magufuli has come out. I, again, I've just received that... Um, writing from my brother Dennis, from my uh, brother Dennis Kiambi. Uh, he has sent me an article whereby the president, Magufuli of Tanzania, has refused to close places of worship. Why? For one integrity that the Lord God Almighty is the solution. Devils cannot fight devils. I mean, science cannot fight the virus. No, it is the Lord is doing. It is the angel of death that is passing throughout the earth. Why? Because of the sins of the world. So the only redemption is Jesus Christ. If my people, says the Lord, shall humble themselves and pray, then God will have mercy and forgive them. So 
It is time for prayer. It's time for prayer. America has called for prayer. Tanzania has called for prayer and the government has said the church should remain in operation and the pastors should kneel down and they pray for the nation that the nation might be saved. What is your president waiting to do? What is your pastor waiting to do, my brother and my sister? I have just received, I wrote an article about repentance and my brother Gabriel wrote an article about repentance and sent it to different WhatsApp groups, different uh, media stations. And I received a commentary from one man of God is a pastor and they told me, Lawrence, this is not the time to speak about repentance. People are grieving, people are in fear, people are worried, so don't talk about repentance right now. Speak about love, speak about joy, speak about encouragement, speak about healing and deliverance. I charged him, I told him, man of God, I respect you so much and I dread at the men of God that are really given to the Spirit of God. But I asked him that, I pray for you that you may see Jesus, that you may see an angel, you may receive just a visitation of one angel and to warn you and to show you things that are happening in the world. If you just encounter any angel of God or you encounter Jesus, you will be able to know what is happening and know that it's a call for repentance. It's a call for repentance. So it's not time to relent. It's not time to, 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 for, for healing. It is the time for repentance. Healing will come after repentance. I know very well when you get a wound, you do not just cover up the wound in order to be healed, but you've got to put salt upon it, put a certain spirit upon it, put vaccination upon it. There is no, uh, injection which is not painful every injection is painful every every operation is painful every operation is painful so if you go to want if you want to be healed of this situation then you've got to repent first check yourself repent close yourself in those meaning get away from the things of the world get away from the things of the world and uh, repent when you repent you are going to receive the forgiveness of God and the nations shall be redeemed. America is going to be forgiven because the Congress has stood up and have repented. Uh, Tanzania have stood up for the nation and the President Magufuli has repented and said, let the church go on and pray on behalf of the people. Let Uganda arise. Let all nations arise. Let presidents awake and call upon prayer in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let all pastors tell the congregations, tell the people that it's only repentance that will bring deliverance upon God's people. When you fail to repent, my brother and my sister, when your brother or your child or when your father or when your life is taken up into coronavirus and you did die or you see your child dying, then you will know that trust not in the science and it's not time for comfort but for calling upon the grace of God. Amen. God bless you so much. God bless you, my brother, Cheyune Vincent, wherever you are watching from. God bless you so much. I know you are in Uganda. God bless you so much. I mean, you are from Uganda. God bless you so much. And everyone share with a friend. We are going to share about false Christ. We've read a scripture in Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. The Bible says that for many shall come in my name, many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. I am Christ and shall deceive many. So we want to know the meaning of, the, of this scripture. These are some of the signs of his coming. The apostles asked Jesus in verse 3 of Matthew 24 that what shall be the signs of your coming? And now we've begun to reveal the signs of Jesus' coming. And the first sign that Jesus revealed is there shall come forth false Christ and they shall deceive many. So what are false Christs? What are these Christs that shall come? Many shall come in my name and they shall speak and they shall deceive many. When you read the same of chapter, verse 24, the Bible says, For there shall arise false Christs and the false prophets, 
and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you beforehand. So Jesus warned us that there would come great men of God, great prophets, great apostles, great evangelists, great men of God in his name. And they shall say, we are his servants. And they shall perform great miracles, great signs, and great wonders. And they would deceive the very elect. The children that are already born again would be deceived if it were possible. So who is a Christ? The, uh, be a, a Christ, a Christ doesn't mean Jesus. The name Christ or the title Christ is just a title. Christ is a title. Christ is a title. It is not the name of Jesus. No, it is just a title. And it simply means the anointed one. Christ means the anointed one. It is from a Greek word, Christos, which is by interpretation, anointed one. Or in Hebrew, the Messiah. So Jesus is the Messiah, is the true Messiah. Jesus is the true anointed one of God. The Bible says at the time he was baptized in Matthew chapter 3, that the Holy Spirit came upon him. He was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And John and Peter go on proclaiming and testifying about him, saying Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Spirit and went on doing good, uh, preaching the message of the kingdom, healing them that that were possessed, that were sick, and they brought salvation unto men. So Jesus is the true Christ. He is the true Messiah. He is the true anointed one. So the Bible didn't say there shall come false Jesuses. It says false Christs, meaning false anointed ones. So who is an anointed one? Who is an anointed one? So an anointed one any person can be anointed of God and divert from the truth and falls away from it, or a person can be fully anointed by the devil. Remember, the devil was anointed on the day he was created. When you read Ezekiel chapter 28, you will see that the devil was anointed. He was anointed, the Bible says, though at the anointed cherub who covereth, though what in the garden of God in the day that thou created. So in the day Lucifer was created, he was anointed. And when he fell from the presence of God, he anoints, he gives out familiar spirits to the Athens, to people. And he has crowned today very many people. And they, many people anointed, by the way. Many people anointed and miracles are happening. Miracles are happening, but people are not using God's power. They are not using God's spirit. That's why when you tell them to repent, they are not willing. How can you see a man anointed of that spirit of the devil? When, um, when you look at the fruits, the Bible says, you shall identify them with their fruits. With their fruits. A man anointed of the devil doesn't know the time. The Bible says, to be carnally minded is death. So when you see a man of God focused upon earthly things, focused upon earthly things, he is anointed by the devil, not by God. The Bible says, uh, the love of money is the root cause of all evil. So when you see a man of God focused upon money, then you know he is anointed of the devil. Every time you speak about money, 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 prosperity, the riches of the earth, prosperity, the riches of the earth, then you know he's anointed of the devil. So when you see a man contradicting with the scriptures, a man, the Bible says, now, when Jesus sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel, he commissioned them to go and preach the message of the kingdom, which is repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So any man who diverts from such a doctrine is baptized with the familiar spirits of devil. So when we go out to preach, we don't speak saying that, here on earth, you are going to be comfortable. Jesus, remember, said, in earth there are many troubles. 
So if a man speaks to saying, here you shall build up mansions and you shall live forever, he is a liar and is denying the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Here we have no continuing city, but we seek one which is to come. So the Antichrist or false Christ come as anointed men and they said the ascent of God, but their father is known is of that is the devil. Yeah, they've been sent of the devil and they identified of those things. A man focused on Ukano things, as we've seen, that to be carnally minded is death. So, and the man focused about money, which is that the love of the world is hatred to God and the love of money is the root cause of all evil. When you see men supporting homosexuality, supporting gay marriage, supporting lesbianism, supporting corruption, standing with the filthy corrupting governments, when you see a real, uh, a great man of God or any man of God rooted in the governments of this world, you know he's already corrupt because the system, the systematic governments of this world, they are corrupt. They are seeds of devils. There is a lot of crime in the systems of the world. There is a lot of crime and they commit great of uh, grievances onto the earth. When you look at Uganda, how men have been, how uh, the church of God, men of God have been bought by the president of Uganda and by the government to speak on his behalf that the president may be, may be sustained in power. The president of Uganda has bought pastors to speak on his behalf and to campaign for him that people may elect the president to continue in power. And he has given them money that they may not speak against the sin, that they may not speak against the corruption that goes on in the world, that poor people are being oppressed day and night, and the government is watching, and the pastors are watching, but they're still telling people, bring in your offertory, bring in your money. They're draining up people, uh, exploiting them, and they promise peace at the end. Peace at the end. These are the antichrists. These are the antichrists who are focused on earthly materials. They are enriched. They are rich in. Uh, they, they are enriching them in material wealth. That is to say, they are buying private jets. They are buying estates. They are establishing lands, great mansions. They are establishing palaces on earth because in heaven they don't have place. Remember, Jesus said, Behold, I go to the Father to prepare for you mansions. So any man of God is focused upon his mansion in heaven. The Bible says, Hide your riches in heaven, where no moth can come, where no thief can come. But when you see a man of God given to the things of the world, investing much in estates, in vehicles, in cars, in private jets, in houses, building palaces, building up great, great architecture buildings, great mansions, great Everyone actually wants to have the best uh, church building, the church building, uh, like we have competitions in Uganda. One wants to have the best uh, church building in Uganda, another wants to have the best uh, building in East Africa, another wants to have the best building in, in, in Africa, in West Africa, in Europe. Many people are in competition. They are focused on things on earth. But when you are a man of God, you are focused upon your mansion in heaven. We are storing our mansions in heaven. Every time you speak about repentance, every time you speak about healing, I mean about salvation, you are piling up your riches in heaven. Every time you give to the poor, every time you help the needy, you are storing up your riches in heaven. What is this? This light is corrupting my message, but God is faithful. So let's get focused to the message of the kingdom. Let's focus on to the message of the kingdom. The Lord said, false Christ shall come. How shall we know this is false Christ? How shall we know them? The Bible says they shall be anointed. They have the real power to perform miracles. The lame shall walk by their preaching. The blind shall see. They shall perform miracles. Have you seen today miracles that are being performed? The, everyone is performing miracles. Men are turning 
are water into wine, but it is not profitable to the kingdom of God, but they're just playing a comedy to the believers. And believers anyway, because of ignorance, they are just following. Pastors are having several wives. They are having several wives. They have allowed to wed married people already. I mean, people who have divorced and they are remarrying them with other partners. So that is ridiculous. It's against the word of God, but they have taken advantage of the church. So uh, these are some of them that are false Christ. The Bible says when we shall see these things happen, then we should raise our heads up and say, our redemption draws nigh. Our redemption draws nigh. And the doctrine of false Christ is one. Peace, peace, peace. That is the doctrine of false Christ. Every false Christ on earth preaches peace. Remember, Jesus said in Luke chapter 12 of verse 50, don't think that I came to bring peace. Have you seen that, my brother? Don't think that I came to bring peace on earth, but division. Your very enemy shall be from within your house. Why? Some will accept Jesus Christ and others will not accept Jesus Christ. So two kingdoms shall be in one house and they shall be divided. So that is the kind of division he brought. So a man speaking of peace, international uh, uh, unity, unity, unity and peace, those are, those are, false prophets that are out there who preach peace peace in times of calamity peace in times of battle peace in times of distress peace in times when the angel of god is passing calling people to repentance and people are conforming them uh, their members of the world into their sins not telling them to repent so it is a call, my brother, for repentance. The Lord said, if we shall see these things happening, we know our redemption draws nigh. Can we go through the book of uh, Revelations shortly? I, I just did not want to touch the seals. The seals, but it's expedient to bring the whole revelation of God is what? Within the remaining 10 minutes. And we see it. We shall make this very uh, recording tomorrow. Tomorrow with my brother Tadias, we shall repeat it and go through the depth of it all. Can we just read in Revelations chapter 6, verse 2? Let's see just shortly. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 6, verse 2, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and the crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Don't be deceived. You remember Matthew chapter 24 verse 4 says, don't be deceived. Now, we are in a situation where there are many false Christs, many false teachers who have not given themselves to sound doctrine, who have not sought the presence and the spirit of God. The true interpretation of this scripture, many people have, uh, have um, shipwrecked, many people have fallen away from the grace and they have interpreted it uh, falsely, I will say falsely. Why? Let's see it. When you look at the seals, when you look at the seals, the Bible speaks about the seals. We shall see it in details next time. By looking upon the first seal that was opened, the first seal, when it was opened, when it was broken, the Bible says, and behold, John saw, and when he had seen, he saw a white horse, a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow, had a bow, and he was given a crown, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, this man that went out is not Jesus Christ. Many people have interpreted the first seal, the white horse rider, as Jesus Christ, but not Jesus Christ. Here, I have obtained wisdom from the holy angels and from the revelations of God's word, from the Holy Spirit. This man that is out in Revelation chapter 6 verse 2 is the Antichrist. Is the Antichrist. Why? Wherever Jesus is identified, Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is the sword of the Spirit. Jesus has a crown. He's already king. So this man, the Bible says, he rode on a white horse. He had a bow. 
a ball is a bite a ball is a bite a ball is used by hunters and you who know history a ball is always used by kuput during valentine celebration kuput is a pagan goddess of fertility kuput is the god of fertility so he uses when you see that kuput that little child having a bow and an arrow going through the heart and striking through the heart that is kupudi so that is the bow a bow is used by hunters so jesus christ has no bow in his hand because a bow is a bite a bow is a bite in luganda a bow is omutego oba olutula abayizi lweba kozesa so a bow is a bite so jesus is not hypocritical to go out hiding 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 no jesus is direct is the son of god but the bible says be warned of the wolves who go out in sheep's clothes amen be ye warned of the leaven of the Pharisees, the hypocrites that go out there. This man that dresses in white, seated upon a white horse, had a bow, he had no crown, but he was given a crown. Remember, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was king, he is king, and he shall be king. He is God, he was God, and he shall be. He is the same today, yesterday, forever. He was having a crown from beginning to the end. He is the king. But this deceptive man of Revelations chapter 6, verse 2, was given a crown. He was just crowned. And the next thing, he went on conquering through his mysterious work with his bow, he went on conquering. Remember, a bow, he had a bow without arrows. So he had hidden schemes to trap his victims. So with his hidden schemes, he trapped his victims. And the Bible speaks about his schemes as a prophetic word by Daniel. Still, we can just go through the book of Daniel hurriedly. And tomorrow, we shall elaborate more. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, Dubai time and by 2, uh, 2, 2, 2 p.m. East African Standard Time, we shall be able to, 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 to go through all the scriptures and we explain more. So Daniel chapter 8, verse 24, I do believe. Daniel chapter 8, verse 24. The Bible says, And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. So the work of the Antichrist always is peace. They speak peace, yet destruction is hidden in their hearts. They speak they are hypocritical men, they speak peace, yet they are stabbing you in the inside of you. They are stabbing you behind you, they speak to you peace, yet they are burying you down into the grave. And uh, Paul warned the church of the Thessalonians, Paul warned the church of the Thessalonians in Thessalonians chapter 5, Thessalonians, um, Thessalonians, can I see it? Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. The Bible says, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. So, false Christ use peace and safety. So, with miracles, with many power of miracles, prophetic words which are not necessary, prophecy which is not necessary, they are deceiving many, prophesying peace, peace, peace amidst calamity, and then a sudden destruction shall fall upon God's children. So, antichrists are already there. The first Antichrist was revealed in the days the Roman Catholic Church came into existence by Constantine in the days of, um, in the days uh, back in 300 after Christ, 300 after Christ, that is in the third century, that's when the Catholic Church came to existence with peace and unity, and now it's globalizing still. So. The first horse rider, the first horse rider, the first horse is 
religious deception with the Antichrist riding it, with evil schemes, with blasphemous names, which are false doctrines of peace, peace and safety, yet destruction is on the way upon God's people if they are not uh, uh, if they are not cunning, if they are not vigilant, they shall still be taken up in this kind of trap by the enemy. So deception is already there, false Christ already there, the antichrists are already there, great deception is already there, false prophets are already there, and they are conquering. I tell you, the church is filled up with the people who are not born again. The church of false prophets, I mean, the church of false prophets is filled up with the people who are not born again. Prostitutes go into church and they are permitted. Women in miniskirts, women in, in leggings, revealing their bodies in uh, gay marriage people are in the church, they have been permitted by false prophets, and these false prophets don't care about human life, they don't care about uh, uh, your salvation, they don't care, they just want to consume your life. So they, the false prophets out there, they are everywhere, they are in the Catholic church, they are in Islam, they are in Pentecostal churches, they are in every denomination, in every religion. They are out there. They don't care about your salvation. They don't care about their salvation. They, are, they care about their mission. Their mission is to destroy your life. So my brother and my sister, you see how worship has been corrupted? Reggae, uh, hip hop. When these things, when hip hop, when rap, when reggae came by, People like uh, Bobu Male, people like Lucky Dube, people like uh, the, the, the Beatles of the, 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 uh, is it of the Western culture, they were demonic. We thought, the world thought that they were demonic and the church resisted. But when the Antichrist comes out, the false prophets comes out, they have acknowledged hip hop, they have acknowledged rap, they have acknowledged reggae and it's being performed all over in the church. And the children of God who dress costumes of devils. They dress costumes. People perform in the churches with the costumes, with the t-shirts, of skulls, of, of pyramids, of Illuminati names, of Illuminati signs. They do those things in the church. So all those churches are filled with the devils and uh, really the Antichrist is already out. The Antichrist already out, they are out, they are many. Until their leader shall set in in the day which we are waiting for. The Bible says, when you shall see him sit in the holy place and being worshipped as God, then you will know it is the end time. So, but now he has sent out many false Christ. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 5 that there shall come many false Christs. There shall come many and they shall deceive many. Today, people have turned away from the faith of Jesus Christ and now they believe in the pastors, they believe in the prophets. You can tell them anything, but don't speak against the man of God, don't speak against the church. People are conformed with the church, with their pastor, with their doctrine, with their prophet. That's all what they need. They don't want to know about the Bible, they don't want to read it, they don't want to fast, they don't want to pray. They want to be prayed for, they want to hear the word of the prophet. That's all they need because the prophet will tell them, God bless you, God heal you. Yesterday you ate matoke, yesterday you ate posho, yesterday I see you are looking for job. Material things. When you see a carnally minded prophet or a carnally minded pastor, you know he's an antichrist. But a man of God will tell you, repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. My brother, my sister, you have been warned. We are in the last days. The antichrist are already out and they are in church. They are in the church already out there. Many religions have sprung out. All religions are demonic. Only our faith, we should put it in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
and believe him and trust in him and lean upon his promises, lean upon his word, and then you shall be saved. The Bible says, when you shall hear of them, don't hearken to them. And not only that, uh, 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 false prophets have come even to, to a point whereby they've acknowledged themselves as God, as Jesus. Not only the anointed ones, but they have acknowledged themselves as Jesuses. Have you seen there are many Jesuses out there, begin with the Jesus that manipulated that uh, manipulated people and is out there being watched the picture of Jesus that played the movie in the Passion of Jesus Christ or in the life of Jesus Christ. It is that picture is being worshipped all over Roman Catholic Church, even Pentecostal churches, the Orthodox churches, the Presbyterians. They are using that picture to worship. To worship in reference to Jesus. That is, that is the Jesus. My brother, our Jesus is in heaven. If you want to see the form of Jesus, read Revelations chapter 1 from verse 8. You will see the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, whose eyes is like a lamp, whose face shineth like the sun that shines with all its sevenfold splendor. That is Jesus Christ, whose feet is like iron, uh, uh, banished in the fire, uh, who is dressed up with a, a golden breastplate. So that is the Lord Jesus Christ, from whose lips, from his tongue comes forth a, a two-edged sword. That is Jesus Christ. Our Jesus is not on the cross. No, you can see paganism all over Catholic Church. They are worshiping, bowing down before idols, bowing down before the cross, bowing down before that pagan creature on the cross. That pagan statue on the cross, that is not our Jesus. Our Jesus is the Son of God. He is highly lifted up, seated at the throne of God, at the right hand of the, His Majesty. So, false Christ are out there. Did you see the Serbian Jesus? In Serbia, there is a Jesus. Did you see him? Such out there. He is deceiving much people. In Uganda, we had a very poor fellow. is convinced that he is the Jesus. In Europe, there are many Jesuses out there. In the Philippines, there is a Jesus, a false Jesus. He's out there. But the Bible says, when you shall hear them saying, he's out there, he's out there, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't be deceived. That's why the Bible says, don't be deceived. Matthew chapter 24 verse 4 says, don't be deceived. False Christ shall come, and the false Jesus have already come. Both anointed ones, both a man can be anointed of God and falls away from the faith, and a man can be anointed of the devil. Devil has powered out the spirit of the Antichrist and has powered out the familiar spirits upon many, many prophets and pastors to go out and deceive many people. So don't be deceived. And my brother and my sister, don't be taken up in the one world religion. I stand against it in the strength of the almighty God. I cannot worship the same God that Islam are worshiping to over my dead body. I cannot worship the same God that the Catholic is worshiping. I cannot bow before the same God that the Hindus, that the pagans, that the atheists are worshiping. I cannot. Let me die on my faith, but I will not unite in such corruption and such a sacrilegious act. I stand with Jesus and he shall redeem me in the last day. I confess Jesus, he is my savior and my only redeemer. I, we should not unite under the purpose policy. No, sir. The purpose policy of tolerance Coming into unity and peace, remember, that is the work of the Antichrist. I didn't explain to you the meaning of the first seal. White, the Bible says, there went forth a white horse with him that sat upon him, who was still dressing in white and he had a bow. Now, the meaning of all this, white means righteousness and the peace and unity. And a bow means religious deception. A bow means religious deception. Why religious deception? Because this man is dressed up as if he's righteous, because white means righteousness and peace, as if he's righteous, yet he has a bow. He then schemes in his hand for a bite to destroy God's people. 
So he, uh, the, 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 the first horse rider was a religious man and he was, uh, it represented religious deception that went out into the whole world through religion through religion, false creeds, and many, many, many pagans, pagan things and dogmas. All world people, all people, all Christians, all men and women, both Islamic people, today they celebrate the Christmas. But can you tell me the meaning of the Santa Cross that today you are worshiping in Christmas? Can you tell me the meaning of him? What is his representative in Christianity, in the Bible? Where is his name written that you may acknowledge him as the Father Christmas? He is the Father Christmas because Christmas is a pagan day celebrated from the time of Nimrod. Before Abraham was, Christmas was celebrated. And when you read down in the history, you will know how Nimrod, the mighty hunter before God, how he built up cities and began his religion, uh, the, road, uh, the, the, the Nimrod religion under the reign of his wife Semiramis and the child Tammuz and all those pagan rituals were venerated therein. Today, Christians have generated them. They have venerated them and they believe in them. So this all religious deception has taken over and falseness is out there in the church and we've embraced it not knowing my brother get out of paganism get out of deception come to jesus christ people are celebrating easter people are celebrating valentine's different different international day celebrations by they don't know people are celebrating halloween even christians uk you uk men the the, the british people uh, no, now it's not only the British people that are celebrating the Halloween, even Christians internationally, everywhere, globally, they are celebrating Halloween. Halloween is the day when the dead interlogue, when the dead have dialogues, when the dead come to visit humans, the living, it's a day for the living dead, we have to say. So why would you they celebrate the dead? Without celebration of the dead is with the pagans and with people who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ. But why would you go for it? So religious deception is out there. And many people have been deceived, thinking they can mix God with the world. It is impossible. God is word cannot be corrupted. You are either hot or cold. If you are lukewarm, God will vomit you out of his mouth. It is time to turn from our wicked ways, repent of our wickedness, and turn to God, and God will save us. My brother and my sister, I encourage you today, focus your eyes upon Jesus. Take off your eyes from men, from women, from church buildings, from mansions, from constitutions of nations, from the world health organizations, from UN, from NATO, from League of Nations, from uh, from the Federation of, of Russia, from the Republic of China. Focus your eyes upon Jesus. He is your redemption. Don't look upon, don't believe just in every spirit. The Bible says in John, in First John chapter 2, verse 19, uh, in also in chapter 4, verse 1, saying that there shall come many false prophets and many false antichrists and many false Christ. They shall come. And in chapter 4, First John chapter 4 says, test every spirit that comes along. So if you see a man of God test whether he is having the spirit of Christ and the spirit of Christ never compromises. The spirit of Christ stands on the truth and tells the people to repent from their wicked ways and turn to God for the redemption and for the remission of their sins. We are living in the end times. And one of the signs of the Lord is coming is there should be false Christ. There should be uh, there should be false Christs, there should be uh, uh, false prophets and false apostles, and they are already out there. You are a witness in your church, you are a witness in your country, you are a witness everywhere. So judge by yourself, understand and uh, pray that God may save your soul and God may save your family and your church members and your pastor and your prophet and your country. May the good Lord Jesus bless you so much. Stay blessed. I love you in the name of Jesus Christ. We shall share this message again with my brother, 
Thaddeus tomorrow at 3 p.m. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. we shall share this same message. 3 p.m. Dubai time and 2 p.m. East African Standard Time. God bless you so much. Amen. This voice awakens the sleeping bride. This voice awakens the sleeping bride. This is the day for your salvation. God bless you so much. Share with a friend and visit our website at www.ctmchurches.com for more truth. In Jesus' mighty name, be blessed and be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.